everyone. I'm Allison. And I'm Bryce. And we're Better Half Reviews. Views. And today we're going to be talking about our top five small box games. And we're joined by a guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, my name is Jordan Schoenberger with Jordan Plays Blue uh, over on Instagram and YouTube. All right. So he's going to give his opinions. I feel like he's probably a little bit more experienced in the small box games than we are, but we're going to try to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jordan, do you want to start us off with number five? Sure. Um, yeah, so I was really excited when Allison and Bryce asked about this list because I, on my Instagram, mostly specialize on small box family style games, a lot of dice games and card games and things like that. So I was really excited about that. This was really hard to come to five. So I kind of went through my most recent top 100 games, and this is what I came up with. So number five, I have... Um, a game by AEG called Point Salad, which is a card game that has multi-use cards. You have the front and back card of the cards that you're using separately. The backs of the cards are used for scoring. The front of the cards you use as the vegetable, and it's kind of a set collection game. So some of them, some cards are going to give you points for having different kinds of vegetables. Sometimes they only want you to have certain kind, a uh, certain type of vegetable, and plays really quickly. And I. Love it. You play it, you usually play it like a couple times in a row. It's not usually a one off kind of game. So that's point salad. That's a solid choice. Um, and I agree with you there. Like you usually play it a couple times at least, especially if you lose the first game, right, Bryce? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I always have to get, get revenge. <laughs> All right. Um, so our number five is a game that we recently came to play, and it's called Vault Nut. It's by Lewis Bruet. Um, it's basically uh, mostly a card game, but um, on the backs of the cards are terrain that you can move your little pieces through, and you're trying to be the last man standing. So like you try to pin your opponents between two of you or between terrain, and um, each uh, player power is different. So it's, it's an interesting little strategy game, um, and it's different every time because you're choosing cards to create the layout as you play. So the space grows and grows. And what I like about it is the asymmetrical player powers. Like, you can have some really good player powers, but that means you get fewer units overall. Um, and you lose if all your units are gone from the board. So it's kind of a give and take there like mm -hmm. you could have a really good power but you might have a few units that you're really trying to struggle to keep on the board yeah right. it's really cool is it just for two players uh no you can play it with is it four or five uh it's at least oh, four four, four. Wow. Yeah. okay cool i've never heard of that that sounds great it's a good one we're gonna do a review of it soon nice number four is the smallest game on my list it's a button shy game um, Button Shy is known for their uh, wallet games. They make micro games of only about, you know, 15 to 20 cards and fit in a little plastic wallet. Um, I prefer games in boxes, but I make an exception for a couple of Button Shy games. Um, and this one is Sprawlopolis, um, which is probably my favorite of the, and also their, their most famous one, which makes a lot of sense because it, I think it's the best one that, at least of the ones I've played. And it has um i don't know if it's anything like the one you were just talking about but it has kind of you're using cards to build kind of a terrain or a landscape or a cityscape um and at the beginning of the game you flip over three of the cards and they're going to have scoring objectives on them and then as you're playing the game you just kind of take one card add it to this cityscape you're trying to maybe cover over certain city blocks you're trying to score points based off of where they are really quick really hard like it is a really hard game to do well you i lost so many times before i finally won one um, there's different rules to kind of crank it up and i never play with the additional rules i always stay stay on the low lot line and i'm still not winning every time so it, you can play it cooperatively or solo i usually play it solo i think it makes the most sense that way but yeah that's sprawlopolis i've heard of it but we haven't actually tried any of the button shy games yet I generally like games in boxes too, so. <laughs> I, I agree. I uh, It took me a bit to wrap my head around it, but Sprawlopolis, uh, there's a handful that I think are really good. I think Sprawlopolis, Sprawlopolis is easily the best one. All right. Yeah, we'll have to yeah. try it. 
So our number four is our only Red Raven game on the list. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, it is Rome. So Rome is a smaller game where you have a set of six cards and you're trying to um, play different cards from your hand that have different patterns and you um, take control of the different areas on the cards that are on the table. So if you have the most, what are they, people? Little cube things. Yeah, if you have the most <laughs> cubes on a card when it fills up, then you get to keep the card and it um, counts as victory points in the end, but it also counts as a new like pattern that you could set out on the board. So it's a fun little kind of area control game. And the thing that's cool about that one is that depending on where you're sitting changes the orientation of things. So like if you're sitting across from each other, your cards are going to act a little bit differently than the other person because they're going to be kind of like opposite of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a four-player game, you have people on the sides, which has mm -hmm. the same pattern as you, but because they're oriented differently, yeah. their pattern goes down on the board differently, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have not played Rome. I thought maybe you were going to say uh, Haven. That was the one small box game from Red Raven I had thought about, but I haven't played Rome. I thought about that one. It's in a slightly larger box, so I didn't, yeah. didn't, I didn't pick it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, yeah, that's fair. So on to number three. Number three, um, <clears throat> this is, uh, looking at it, this is surprisingly the only roll and write on my list. I love roll and write games. They, um, surprisingly, this is the, the top one on here. Um, it is, if I'm looking at the rest of mine, this is my favorite roll and write game. One of my favorite, I don't know, which I think it's up there. <laughs> um, um, and that's Railroad Inc. Uh, this is a uh, route building roll and write game. You roll dice to um, all the dice have different rail patterns on them, kind of like T's and straights and curves. And they're going to have highways and railroads intersecting or one or the other. And you roll the dice and you put them out on your board. Depending on how you put them, you're going to be co connecting routes, covering up spaces, you can play with different expansions that have maybe mountains or rivers or forests or things like that. Uh, they had a new Kickstarter that has like, I don't know, 20 different expansion dice in it um, that I am all in on. And I love, I love Roller or Inc. I played it so much while we've been in quarantine online with friends. Um, I play it solo on my phone. I just, and I still haven't gotten tired of it. It's just one of those puzzles that I just can't get enough of, but yeah. That's Robert Inc. Nice. That's one I've um, kind of been wondering about. Like, for the longest time, Roll and Write and everything under that genre, I was like, that's not a game. It's like, yeah, see, <laughs> but fancy. And then finally, I tried like one or two of them. I'm like, okay, it's not that bad. So I'm just barely starting to venture into that area. And that's one of the ones that I've kind of been thinking about. Yeah, it looks good, but we just haven't tried it. It's really good. It, and it's a small box, small package. You can play it super quick and it's super easy to learn too. So just a low barrier of entry kind of roll and write game. And it has a really approachable theme. You know, people, you know, it's got kind of that ticket to ride kind of theme. Um, and it's great. Nice. Very cool. Right. Okay. So our number three is technically not just one game, but a bunch of them. A series, and maybe. It's uh, yeah, the series, I guess it's the unlock games. So they are basically just a deck of cards and we really like, you know, working through mysteries and a puzzle and trying to solve it. And so you, you put out different decks of cards and like you find clues and then you find more cards from those clues. Sometimes you have to do crazy things with the cards. Generally it's something that you only play once, but you know, if you wait long enough between the play, you can maybe play it again. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it's been a lot of fun from the ones that we have tried and it's a, a fun puzzle to solve. Yeah, it's a fun little almost escape room type experience, but in a deck of cards, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I, I love Unlock. I thought about it, but I, they're, they're now coming out in bigger boxes. So I didn't I didn't include it now because the new ones are in the big boxes. Um, which one, which of the ones you've played, which one's your favorite? Hmm. It's hard. It's been a while since we've played one. I feel like the the Wizard of Oz one. Yeah, that one's or really the good. Wonderland was good. Yeah, 
uh, Wizard of Oz one was really good. My I think my favorite's the pirate one, the Tana Pools. Oh, I haven't uh, tried that one. Treasure. That one was I. That one is still my favorite. I have not played them in a while. I'm really hoping to get the Star Wars one soon. Mm. And some of the other ones that are more recent, I haven't gotten any since quarantine. And they've I think they've released like 20 since then. I, I felt <laughs> yeah, super behind. Yeah, we haven't played them for a bit too. So <laughs> yeah, it's been since March. A while since we played one. Yeah. So. <laughs> so I'm hopeful to play some more, but I I I played all of them up to a certain point and then just kind of fell off. But I oh, no. I love them; they're so good. So we're in number two. Number two. So this one also is kind of a series of games. I I kind of I was I didn't know if you were going to say this when when you were saying it was that. <laughs> um, and this is Silver by Bezier Games. This mm-hmm. they have um, four in the series now: Amulet, Bullet, Coin and Dagger is the most recent, and it is a a card game. They set it in their werewolf universe, which doesn't mean a whole lot. It just is nice kind of window dressing, but it is a take on the classic card game Golf, or, um, oh, I played it with my mom, and she said it was something else, some sort of type of poker game. I can't remember. Um, you got me with Golf. I'm there. Yeah, just like Golf, and so but all of the cards have special powers. So you're trying to get the lowest score in front of you. It's kind of some memory aspect to it because you don't know which cards are in front of you. They're all face down. And as you're playing cards, you're going to be able to look at cards in front of you, trade cards in. There's some cards that swap with your uh, neighbors and your opponents. And every set is standalone. So no matter which set you get, you can play the full game. And then once you get multiple sets, you can trade cards in kind of Dominion style where I'm going to place, you know, three cards from this set, three cards from this set, um, and make up your own games every single time. And the card just reacts super interestingly. I know it's, it's kind of a polarizing game because it has memory in it, which people aren't super into. And it has some take that, which admittedly I hate in games. But this one, I don't mind because um, the rounds are pretty quick. And you just don't even have to play with some of the cards that are meaner, you know, because you can just swap them out. Um, but yeah, that's silver. I have all four sets, and I usually have some boxes lying around. They're kind of all over the place. Um, but yeah, that's silver. I really enjoy it. I've I've heard of it, and I've seen like posts and things about it, but I I've never actually like looked into it other than knowing that it was kind of gen generically like werewolf themed because it's from you know Bazier Games. But yeah. yeah, I didn't know it was about golf variant, so that's cool. Yeah, that is cool. It is, yeah. I mean, it's set in that werewolf universe, kind of the same way Werewords is, which yeah. isn't really like that either. It's just the the branding that the company uses. But I, and also the art. I will say the artwork is really good. I actually like it better than the werewolf games. Um, I think the style is really nice. Yeah. Very cool. So our number two is uh, Sushi Go Party. Uh, there is also Sushi Go, which is a little smaller format, but Sushi Go Party is still pretty small on its own. Um, but it's a fun little game where you have these cute little sushi cards, or sushi, or these cute cards with sushi on them. <laughs> um, and you take a piece of sushi and you pass the rest, and um, you're just trying to build different sets and gain points that way. So it's a fun little like party game. We've had a great time playing it with parents, friends, um, non-gamers. It's the only type of sushi that I'll go for. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not a fan of sushi, like real sushi. And so um, kind of jokingly for uh, Father's Day, I was like, I got you something that you'll really like. It's sushi. It's in the fridge. I put Sushi Go Party in the fridge. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) And I was sitting there going, what? Like, you wouldn't have gone out and gotten sushi in the last couple of days. Like it's just been sitting in the fridge. That's so gross. Right. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So it's just a fun game and it's great for introducing to people and it's just a fun time and it's absolutely adorable. I yeah, I love Sushi Go Party. Um I it's great with family, great with you know, friends that play super quick. I was at a um a new game group that I hadn't gone to but very often or maybe once or twice before and i was meeting with um the uh i was meeting a friend there and he was already playing a game so some people waved me over thinking i was brand new didn't know anything about it and they're like we're gonna play this game it's not very hard you'll be able to pick it up really quick 
And I was like, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> By the end of it, I was correcting their rules because they, you know, I, I've, I've, I'm very well aware of Sushi Go Party and the other games that were having happening there. So. So at the end of that, where you're like, and by the way, if you want any more information about other games, here's my uh, channel. And... By the way, here's my card. Um... <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's awesome. You should have put money on the game. Be like, okay, should've. this is my first time, so should've. let's see if I have beginner's luck. Have you guys ever tried Scythe? I've heard it's like really popular. You want to try it? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Be a shark. Shark at game nights. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, all right awesome. so what's your number one number one is there like a gong or a bell we have to ring for we just uh imitate eric summer number, number one. one all right um my number one is a game that came out last year at the very end of last year um actually looked up online to see if i should put it on this year's my best of the year list because it came out so late last year um that it didn't make my end of the year list last year because it had just come out but um, this is a two-player card game from Lookout Games called Mandala. Uh, this is a... Uh, the box is about the size of a Lost Cities box. It feels like one of those Cosmos two-player games. Um, it is a card game. It, uh, you're playing back and forth. It has a really pretty cloth mat. It's not like a neoprene mat. It's not a board. It's a cloth mat. And you are playing cards on your side of the mat in these two sections of of the of the play area and you're trying to get colors on each section once all six colors are represented on the section it's going to score and you draft the cards that were in the section and you get points based off of that but it had the cards are really interesting because there's nothing on the cards except for a cut like the only piece of information on the cards is color so there's no numbers, there's no suits, there's no powers. It is just that. Square cards with a pretty picture on it. And you're just calling them, you know, purple card, black card, yellow card, orange card. And it has a couple things that I love in games. I love when there's player-triggered scoring, which doesn't happen a whole lot. But it's like when, you know, scoring doesn't happen at the end of certain rounds or at a certain point or only at the end of the game scoring is happening once the players achieve something so kind of like in lost cities where you're kind of you know you know that when the game's going to end based off of when the deck runs out and so you can you can um uh you know play off a little bit and uh stall to do that and so this game has a lot of that and it also has kind of variable scoring so that depending on which cards you get each of those cards is going to score a different amount of points depending on when you draft them so the car the first color that you draft for the rest of the game any cards that you collect in that color is actually worth one point the last color that you collect all of the cards you collect in that color is worth six points so you want to make sure that you're not getting all the, like certain colors at the beginning of the game because you know you want to score certain colors higher it's so good it's so thinky and it does play pretty quick so it's a game where you're playing with one person you're like all right, I lost. We're going to try it again. Okay, I lost. We're going to try it again. I'm going to get you this time. Two out of three, three out of four, you know, um, three out of five, whatever. It's so good. It's super pretty. And um, I think because of when it came out, it didn't get a whole lot of buzz, but I, it is in my top 10 favorite games right now. Um, I have a friend and he and I have played it so many times. He comes over, he's like, let's play Mandala. I, he's like, let me borrow it. I want to play it with my wife. Every time, and then I went over to his house. He's like, "Let's play Mandala." I'm like, "Okay," and we just kept playing it, and it's so good, it's so good. So you compared it, or you seem to be comparing it to Lost Cities. Is that a game where if you like Lost Cities, you should like Mandala? I, they are they they're very different. Like I own both, and I don't I don't think I think you can own both without any problem. But they are similar enough that I think they um, they are comparable. Um, I think if you like one, you'll probably like the other. Um, honestly, Mandala might be a little easier to teach um, because there's l less less information than Lost Cities. It might be harder to be good at it, though. It kind of has that, it has kind of a classic abstract feel where it's like easy to learn, lifetime to master kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's hard to hard to do well, but it's pretty easy to get into. Yeah. 
I don't think I've really heard much about it other than I've heard the name before, but I didn't know anything about the game. <laughs> it's really good. I, you'll see me on like uh, the Dice Tower group or any board game groups, and they're like, how about I, I – it's like one of my games where I'm like, you have to check out Mandala. Like, check out Mandala. You need a two-player game? Check out Mandala. You need a card game? Check out Mandala. You need a pretty game? Check out Mandala. Like, it is that game for me. Nice. <laughs> All right, so our number one is actually a flip and write, which uh, you know how I said I don't really mm -hmm. go into that genre. Well, this is the one that broke it for us, and it is Cartographers. So uh, the first time we played it was on like Tabletopia or something, and I was like, okay, fine, because we are going to play it with some people that we were meeting. We are like, okay, yeah, fine, we'll try it. And then... We played it again, and then I showed it to my friend, and then I bought the app, and then we bought the game. Um, and then we backed the Kickstarter expansion. Um, or no, oh, I thought we did. Okay. We well, we Maybe did, we and then we canceled it, and now we're sad that we canceled it. It'll but be out. Really you can get it. it. <laughs> it's fun, and I like again, like it's just kind of puzzly, and you, you don't know what's coming up right away with the cards. Like you can plan for. The different scorecards down the road but you don't know what card you're going to get right then so it's kind of interesting to kind of like just change it out and be like okay i need to do this and then i hate those goblins so much i was gonna say i love the goblins <laughs> it's the like one little chance that you can affect like another player i don't know it's just such a little thing but it can throw someone off really bad that's true and um, so, like, I've seen other people's boards where they look all pristine and colored and very clear. And mine starts okay, and then it just gets messier and messier. And I'm like, man, people's boards look pretty. And I'm like, mine does not look that way. But anyway, so, yeah, that's our number one, a flip and write cartographers. When you when you were describing it, I was like, it has to be card you guys would like, I think. So I'm not surprised. It's 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 super good. Um, I've played it up. There's, a, there's an app for it. Have you guys played the app? Yep. Yeah, I've played that a bunch. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to the, the new one to see if yeah, it, what that it definitely looks like it's table. gonna be pretty cool. Yeah. We just didn't back it. I I didn't either, but I, it's gonna be in stores. I'll just pick it up then. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I think that's kind of ultimately why we didn't. Yeah. And I needed to back something else anyway, so but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is our top five small box games. Um, thank you to Jordan for joining us. And you guys who are watching, let us know what some of your favorite small box games are or based off of our different lists, what should we start next? You never know. There's tons of options out there. Obviously, Jordan's played tons more than we have. I already wrote down a few that he's mentioned. So. Almost all of them. <laughs> right. Except the one we already have. <laughs> um but actually real quick so jordan did you have any honorable mentions oh yes so Just i had so many so many um i see one behind you over your shoulder truffle shuffle um yep i really like truffle shuffle um that has like a seven and wonders dual kind of feel it's super good probably the one that i felt the worst about not putting on my list was oh my goods which mm -hmm. is a engine building euro game that's just a deck of cards um it comes it is a tiny box like a deck of cards box and it's it is really good it is a full experience in just a deck of cards it's a full medium weight euro game really meaty um engine building game yeah i i felt bad leading that one off but i just like the other ones a little better yeah um my honorable mentions were point salad which you brought up and my other one is hopefully people don't think I need to turn in my gamer card, Monopoly Dio. It's the only form of Monopoly that I'll actually play nowadays, and it's a fun, quick card game, and it just feels like more towards like a hobby game than like, you know, the generic gateway game, but anybody can play it. Yeah, it's a good one. I've played it. It's enjoyable. And then my honorable mentions were 8-Minute Empire Legends. This is another Red Raven game. Um, it's a little area control, I don't want to say four, like very tiny 4X game, <laughs> um, but you're just battling over um, this little board um, with, you know, pieces, your, your little men and whatever, but it's a fun little game. Um, and then uh, 
my other <laughs> honorable fine. mention was just a plain deck of cards. Like, there's so many games you can play with just a plain deck of cards, whether mm-hmm. by yourself or with a bunch of people, so. I concur. I, I'm surprised I didn't think about that earlier, and when he mentioned it, I'm like, man, that really should be on there, because I grew up playing card games, and I know tons of them, and, you know, there's lots of options. Yeah, I played some, I, we played cards every week growing up, so, you know, that's a, that's a great choice. Okay, so now we've got all our honorable mentions. <laughs> um but yeah so thank you again for joining us i hope you had fun yeah this was a lot of fun i love talking about board games <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> Good guest. and apparently we like to match and everything too because um, i'm looking at the outfits here who knew? And... <laughs> who knew all right so everybody let us know your favorite small box games or games that we should be trying next i'm allison and i'm bryce and we're mm-hmm. better half reviews I'm Jordan with Jordan Plays Blue. Check me out on the internet. Yes, go check out his page. He posts lots of cool stuff. There will be links in the description. All right, we'll catch you next time. Have fun.